Giving up desserts for a whole year isn't easy, but I did it. So today I'm gonna share with you everything I learned. Now, if you've been around on my channel for a while, I think I've mentioned this before, but I've never gone into the full story of exactly what happened and what the outcome was from the experience of giving up sugar for a year. Now, if you're new to my channel and you have no idea who I am, then my name is Sarah. I'm a registered dietitian, and this channel is all about healthy lifestyle, healthy recipes, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So if you're into that, make sure you click that subscribe button. Now, as far as the whole no sugar thing, how it came about, um, it happened the summer before my junior year of high school. And this was a time where I was eating a lot of sugar. I mean, my favorite go-to snack in the middle of the day was I would get four mini Reese's peanut butter cups and then I would use that and make a s'more like just on the stove top but I used the peanut butter cups as the chocolate instead of a chocolate bar. It tastes amazing but eating a couple of those a day definitely isn't something I would recommend from a health standpoint. So I was kind of at this place where I just was eating so much of these sweets and I felt like I gotta cut this out. So 17 year old me who definitely had a history of some disordered eating and all that kind Kind of thing thought well I'll just stop eating them and I'd actually tried to stop and then I got back with it and then I was like okay no I can't do this so I will stop again but this time for some reason it just stuck so the initial plan going in wasn't like to cut out all sugar for a year or anything like that it was just about giving up these desserts and I will preface this with saying it's not like I gave up every single form of sugar um, especially back then I wasn't really thinking about hidden sugars as much when I first started this whole process so it was mostly just about desserts, candies, that sort of thing, your obvious sweets, because I just kind of wanted to break myself of it. So I was still eating fruit and stuff like that in the mix, but I was cutting out all of this extra dessert type things. Now, when I started it, I was just going along and I didn't really have an end date in mind. I was just kind of like, I'm just doing this because I'm eating too much. I know I need to cut it out. And something you should know about my personality is I can be kind of extreme, um, at least with myself. With other people, I'm pretty, you know, moderate and like try to see everyone's perspective and take everything into consideration. But when it comes to myself and making decisions, I just like go for something, I make the decision and it's done. I'm very much a rule follower growing up. If they said, this is the rule, this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you're not supposed to do, then I would do it. And even now, you know, I want to go out the door that says exit, even if the one that says enter is right next to it, because that's the one you're supposed to exit out of, stuff like that. So that kind of gives you an idea of how my brain works. So this thing went on for a few weeks, and then a month, and then a couple months, and I didn't really know where I was going with it, and people would start asking me, you know, like, when I would start turning down desserts and stuff, and I was telling people, oh, I'm doing this thing, I'm trying to cut out sugar, whatever, uh, people were like, well, how long are you doing that for? Or what's the plan? And I was like, I don't really know, I'm just kinda doing it, and we'll see what happens, I guess. But then once I started to get a few months in, I started thinking, well, maybe I should set a time on this. Like, if I'm already a few months in, maybe I could do this for six months. Maybe I could even do it for a year. And so that's what I decided to do. I said, that would be a fun challenge, right? That's a fun thing to do, to give up all desserts and everything for a year. Now, obviously, most normal people don't think this is a fun thing, but that's the kind of thing, apparently, that I would think is a fun thing to do. So I just went with it. And as I was going through this, more and more people started to find out, you know, as I got into the school year, just because I couldn't eat any desserts or sweets. It wasn't like something I was like parading around talking about a lot or advertising so much as it would just automatically come up eventually with the people I was around a lot. But I was just trucking through, I was doing my thing. Um, and as I started to move through this whole process, the first lesson I learned was more about like what, where sugar actually is and where is the line between something that's a dessert and something that isn't a dessert. And this really started to come up whenever I would have a sugar craving. So there were times where I just wanted something sweet and fruit wasn't really cutting it, it just wasn't doing the trick. And I found myself going for things like cereals or granolas. And when I first started doing that, I was like, well, this isn't a dessert, this is fine. Like for my whole one year, no sweets thing, this doesn't count. But then as I kept turning to those things it really got me thinking wait this is kind of maybe a dessert I mean if I'm turning to this because it's so sugary just because it's not cake doesn't mean that it's like 
okay. You know, and obviously these rules were something that were kind of developing as I was going through this thing, but that was the first thing I started to learn as a 17 year old who really didn't know a lot about nutrition and also had some pretty whacked ideas about food. It made me aware that there are a lot of things in our everyday life that we don't think of as dessert foods. They don't hold that place in our meals or how often we think we should eat them, but really they probably are more like a dessert than not. So once I figured that out, I said, okay, I got to cut those foods out too, because this doesn't go along with the spirit of what I'm trying to do, um, if I'm turning to it and using it in this way, so it needs to go because that's what normal high schoolers do, I guess. So then I cut those things out and I was moving through it more and more. And another thing I learned throughout the process as I continued was that you can just say no to stuff. So before this, if anyone offered me a food to eat, the automatic answer was yes. If someone gave a, had a plate of cookies, said, does anyone want one? Yes, I would like one. That was just the default answer. And it never really occurred to me that there was another option. And I would even see other people actually deny things. And I would think, what's up with that? Like, why do they do that? Or how can they do that? Or, you know, I didn't really understand it or get it. I'm like, who doesn't want a cookie all the time? I mean, I always want a cookie. Um, and so that was something that really stood out to me. And now later on, as I know more, obviously as a dietitian, just about hunger and fullness and all that kind of stuff, I really realized that before I went through, th through this experience that I didn't consider those things. If it tasted good, I wanted it. It didn't matter if I was hungry or not or what, you know, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, that sounds good. I'll just have it. Something else I learned from this whole thing is just how much your taste buds can adjust. So when I ended this whole thing and I had that first sweet dessert item, it was like a little chocolate. Um, and yes, I do remember what it was. It was a little chocolate. Uh, it tasted so, so sweet compared to what my expectation would be or what I think I normally would have experienced. It was like the flavors, everything was so much more intense. And you know, you always hear about how your taste buds adjust, you know, to what you're eating and things like that. But just to have that physical experience myself, it really showed me like how subjective our taste is because depending on what you're eating, your taste buds do adjust to that. And so when you start to try to eat differently, um, you know, at first you might not like it or it might taste different from what you would normally eat, but eventually things do change over. Obviously it doesn't take a whole year for this to happen, but it is something to remember if you're trying to cut back on sugar or you're trying to mix in some newer foods that maybe you didn't eat before or anything like that, it does take some time to get used to those changes. Uh, and so it's important to remember that so you can keep going and make the healthy changes that you want to make. Now, even though I did learn these positive lessons, overall, I would say that this experience, this experiment I did on myself also taught me some things that um, are pretty negative in the sense that this is not something I should have been doing. You know, um, at the place I was at then mentally, just my relationship with food, all that stuff was not very good. I was coming out of some disordered eating behaviors and still had a disordered mentality when it came to food. So I don't think it's something I should have done. And there were some things that came out of it that really showed me the damage of doing something like this. So first off, anything that's like you always do this or you never do that, anything that's super extreme doesn't really allow for life to happen. So an example of this is during this year of no desserts, I had a birthday because those kind of happen once a year. And on my birthday, we couldn't have any cake. I mean, we could have cake, but I couldn't have any. And it's not that you have to have cake for a birthday. That's not real, uh, but it is something culturally that we do. And it was just kind of like, you know, it was kind of weird. And it was, you know, people around me were like, well, it's your birthday though. Don't you think you should? Or, you know, how can you not? And I was just like, no, I'm not allowed to. We're not doing it. That's not happening. You know, it was like, there was no discussion. I just couldn't, you know? And so that is something that I feel like any sort of dieting mentality can do that to you, where you can't live life. You can't do the things you want to do. It's taking you out of those experiences. Another example is during this year, I was lucky enough to be able to go on a trip to France. It was organized through my school. Um, so it was much cheaper than if I'd gone on my own. And it was, you know, everything was so put together. I didn't have to do anything. It was like such a great opportunity. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go and the whole time I was in France I could not have any desserts so I mean I could eat like 
you know, savory pastries or things like that, but anything that was sweet, um, you know, nothing. I couldn't have it. And, you know, people were like, you're in France. Like, this is not that big of a deal. And it was actually close to the end of my year, like a month out or something. And people were like, just break it early. It doesn't matter. But like in my head, I was like, no, I have to do a year. That's what I committed myself to. I'm so close. I can't stop now. And that kind of also gives you some insight into how my brain was working at the time. Uh, so, you know, if you can't live your life because of some diet plan and it's not for a medical reason, obviously if you have an allergy to peanuts, you can't eat peanuts, stuff like that. But, you know, when it takes you so much out of life, that's really a red flag that something is not good and it's probably something that, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Another thing this taught me about dieting is how dieting sets us up to not be able to enjoy what we're really eating. Because when the year was over, I thought that I would be so pumped and excited to like be able to rejoice with this chocolate. And P.S., another sign that this was kind of not good was that it was like this piece of chocolate that I was hiding under my bed that I had selected and saved for this moment, okay? So, little not okay there uh, with that kind of thinking. And, you know, I thought that, okay, I'm gonna be excited for this. I'm saving this special thing, whatever. And then when the day came that my year was up, I was kind of like, I remember telling my mom, I don't know if I'm gonna eat any chocolate, eat the chocolate, I don't know. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like, you did this thing, you wanted to do it. And obviously she didn't see the kind of side of it that was negative. She just saw it as something I was trying to challenge myself to do that I thought was fun because that's the kind of thing that I would think is fun and you know, whatever, why not? Um, though she did have some resistance around the birthday and things like that. She was like, oh really? But overall, you know, she didn't see the parts of it that were kind of like not something I should be doing. And also one of the cats is playing with a toy on the floor. So you get to enjoy that also. Um, Porgy, seriously, can you stop for a second? Wait one second. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So when the day came, I didn't want to eat the chocolate because it almost felt like a failure. Like, I've gone all this time, like, when does it end? You know, even though it wasn't anything that was real, it was just something I had made up. And I had even accomplished this thing I had made up, but it felt like maybe I should just keep going, you know? And I think that's the thing with any sort of like extreme dieting is, I couldn't even enjoy this thing that I had been building up for so long because it felt like a bad thing. And when you can't even enjoy desserts when you do eat them, that's something that does happen with dieting. And I've talked about this in other videos. I'll link them if you want to, you know, hear more about it. But it's basically this idea that, you know, even when we do have those foods that maybe are things, you know, that we shouldn't eat all the time as far as, you know, our health is concerned and stuff like that. Uh, but when we do have them that we can't even really enjoy the experience because we have this voice in the back of our head telling us that it's wrong or it's bad or we shouldn't be doing it or some other version of that. And the other thing this experience highlighted for me was the struggle between extremes. Not everyone has this as part of their personality, but it's definitely something as a culture I think we embrace is like this good and bad foods and extreme diets and then extreme unhealthiness. Um, it's really important to find that line in the middle and it's something that you hear all the time about balance and blah blah blah, but it's really true and when we do extreme things like this going on some sort of extreme diet a lot of people do that because they feel like it's a jump start but when it doesn't teach you the lessons you need to know to live your life normally that's not something that's going to last long term and it's not something that helps you and it can even be something that pushes you back the other way into really unhealthy behaviors and so you're just swinging and swinging and swinging and you're never finding you know that nice place in the middle. Now I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about this whole thing, whether you just have some general thoughts about what I shared or if maybe you've done something similar and had a similar experience. I'd love to hear about that as well. And I hope you liked the video and found it interesting and helpful. And if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes, make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it. And if you're loving the free info here but you're finding that you need something more personalized, don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition sessions. So if you're interested in working with me, just let me know and we can get that set up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.